let's learn about the kit and all the different voices and cool sounds that you can get. The fundamental foundation of the drum set is the bass drum. Around the turn of the 1800s into the 1900s, guys had the idea to start playing the bass drum with a pedal. And this is the first time that the idea became to play multiple percussion instruments with one person. And this is really the birth of the drum set. So let me give you an idea of what my bass drum sounds like. Now we'll talk about the snare drum. A lot of people consider the heart of the drum set to be the snare drum. In a lot of popular music, we play the snare drum on beats two and four as a backbeat. The snare drum is capable of all kinds of sounds. You can play it in many, many different ways and you can play it with the snares on or the snares off. So I'm just gonna play it a little bit right now and give you some ideas of what's capable with the snare drum. Now we'll talk about the toms. The toms are one of the elements of the drum set that you can really start to interject your personality with. Some people have many, many toms. Some people have just a couple of toms. I often like to just have one rack tom, one or two floor toms, and you can really get a lot out of the toms, and we're just gonna play around and see a little bit about what we can get out of these. Now we're going to talk about the hi-hat. The hi-hat is two cymbals played together with this contraption that we call the hi-hat stand. The hi-hat started as the low boy, which was closer to the ground, and the foot would play two cymbals to try to approximate what it sounded like when one guy played two cymbals together. So we were trying to get one guy to do this with his foot so he could do other things around the kit. Eventually the hi-hat stand got higher so that people could play it with their hands as well. So a lot of sounds, possibilities with the hi-hat, so let me give you some ideas of what you can do.
just talked about the hi-hat, so now let's talk about the rest of the cymbals within the kit. Let's start off by talking about the ride. It's called the ride cymbal because you play different patterns on it that help carry the music that you're playing. So I'll start off by playing it pretty simply and then show you some of what's possible by playing the different areas of the ride. You've got the bow of the ride, which you can get a nice clean focus sound on. You've got the edge where you can get a nice crash sound and you've got the bell as well. I generally like a larger ride cymbal. This one is 22 inches. Ride cymbals are all up to personal preference. I like mine to be a little bit darker, not quite as bright, and a little lower pitch than a lot of cymbals that are available. But it's all up to you and it's all up to your personal preference. Next we're going to talk about the crash cymbal. Crash cymbal is used to punctuate the music and play crashes. And you can play these to announce new sections of tunes, or you can use them as punctuation marks within the music. Crash cymbals are usually a little bit thinner, they have a little more impact, and they should have a pretty quick decay. For me, I like my crash cymbals to be able to be ridden on as well. All of my cymbals I like to be able to crash and ride at the same time. There are thousands of varieties of cymbals, everything from small splashes to large crashes and large chinas and gongs and many, many different things and it's all up to your preference. I happen to like this over here. This is my trash crash and you can see that it's hammered extra around the edge and it provides a really trashy crash that blends with the music and also a really trashy ride. So it sounds a little like this. Depending on what type of music you'll be playing, you want to pick different cymbals for different styles and your ear will develop over time. The best thing to do is listen to a lot of cymbals. Maybe go to your local drum shop or music store or get together with your friends and bring your cymbals together. Talk about what you like about different cymbals and your ear will develop over time and you'll start to know what you like. Now I'll just play around my cymbals and show you some of the different sounds that are possible. There are all types of different things you can add to the kit. Really, there is no limit. There's so many different things available. I have a few different things I like to put on the kit occasionally. 
here's a bell, here's a practice conga that I'll put on the floor tom, here's some Pete Engelhart percussion. I usually have a cowbell right here, and there's a wood block over here, and this is my signature Pandero, which gets a kind of floor tom with jingle sound. So I'm just going to play around with all these different voices and try to get some different things happening.